Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. We are so glad that you chose to join us today for worship. We just want to welcome everyone and encourage you to enter into worship, to, to enjoy this experience. Uh, if you could do me a favor at some point today, if you could do me a favor at some point today, and uh, go to nbuc.ca slash welcome and fill a quick form there. We'd love to get to know you better. But right now, let's get ready for worship.
morning, everyone, and happy Easter. We are so glad that you chose to join us today for worship. We just want to welcome everyone and encourage you to enter into worship, to, to enjoy this experience. Uh, if you could do me a favor at some point today, if you could do me a favor at some point today, and uh, go to nbuc.ca slash welcome, and fill a quick form there, we'd love to get to know you better. But right now, let's get ready for worship. Welcome to North Bramalee. My name's Dwayne. I'm on staff here. It is Easter Sunday morning. Uh, what a great opportunity to enter in with joy. Traditional greeting is he is risen with the response of he is risen indeed. And so since we're online, uh, we would love to really try something a little bit different. I would love to have everybody that's online uh, go down to the chat box, down at the, the bottom of your screen on Facebook's bottom right corner. Uh, on uh, uh, life.church. Uh, it's uh, just off to the right a little bit. Uh, so everybody is seeing where it is. Uh, just take a minute and even start typing, he is risen indeed. Because I'm going to say he is risen again and just want uh, uh, you to, to hit enter uh, so we can all respond together. Everybody ready? Three, two, one. He is risen and he is risen indeed. Oh man, it's great. Thanks for uh, uh, jumping along with us. Uh, we have online hosts that are here to serve you. Uh, if you have a prayer request, you have a question, just feel free to go ahead and type. Uh, you'll be getting information from them. You'll be getting notices of what's coming up from them. They will respond to you. Um, we'll have people ready uh, to pray for you. So just jump in. Now we're going to enter into worship. Duncan is our, uh, our worship lead. I want to encourage you uh, to stand up, to dance, to sing. Uh, even if you can't sing, sing. It's a great opportunity uh, to enter in fully uh, to worship. Thank you. Duncan, take it away. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day saved my soul now your freedom is all that I know the old made new Jesus when I met you you called my name and I ran out of that grave darkness 
into your glorious day you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day I needed rescue, my sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now your love is the air I'm breathing I have a future, my Thanks so much, Duncan, for leading us in that song. Isn't it great to move uh, around and enter in fully uh, to worship? Uh, so next Sunday, I have to talk about this because it's so, so pertinent to where we are uh, right now. With all of the chaos going on all around us, um, we all need a little bit of extra hope. And so we're going to launch into a series all around Hope. Jamie uh, and Katrina are going to deliver a couple of great messages, one right after the other, that you won't want to miss. So please come back next week and join us at 9 and 11. Um, there are going to be services that you just won't forget. We have a phrase around here that this next series is going to be the best one yet. And I think this one will be the next one yet. So you won't want uh, to miss it. As we launch into an, uh, our offering time, um, want to give you the freedom to, uh, uh, if you choose to donate now, uh, you can go to mbuc.ca slash give. Uh, you've got the uh, slides up here. Daryl has put them up so you can see those. But when I think about this, I think about one of our primary messages, our primary biblical principles. It's all about giving with joy. And on Easter Sunday, we have an opportunity to give with joy. Uh, so uh, I want to thank you for uh, what you have been doing, what you do, and what you choose to do today. Uh, thanks so much for helping us to uh, broaden the ministry here at NBUC. Now we're going to continue on with worship. Please join us. Feel free to move around. Let's have some fun and enter in. Jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy And all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so
jealous for me Love's like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath The weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us how he loves us so Yeah, he loves us Oh, how he loves us Oh, how he loves us Oh, how he loves, oh, how he loves. And we are his portion and he Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking So heaven meets earth like a sloppy wind Kissing my heart turns violently inside of my chest And I don't have time to maintain these regrets when Please join me in prayer. Dear God, on this Easter that we experience different than any other Easter, we ask that you resurrect a new life in us, a life completely different than we've ever known before. God, I pray that you take this event And you make it birth something new within all of us. I pray that you show us the Holy Spirit and you show us what Easter can be when we take in its message of resurrection we take in his message of being done with the old, bringing in the new and welcoming it openly into our hearts. Because when we do that, we will find your love. Amen. 
Good morning, everyone. So grateful that we can worship together online today. So whether you're in your Easter Sunday best or whether you're in your pajamas, we're just so glad we can be together. Man, I love Easter. I really do. It's the best news. It's, it's such good news. And it's even more relevant in what we're facing today in, in our world right now. So we have some good news to share and can't wait to share it with you. Let's jump into this story, this first Easter morning from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 8. It says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. Interesting that it was the women who were the first in on this good news. It was also the women who were the last ones with Jesus when he was, when he was on the cross. And so if you ever wonder whether women have a role in, in, in God's kingdom, oh my goodness, absolutely yes. So they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Imagine that. When they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleaned like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Friends, God did something amazing. God did something incredibly amazing. And there may be all kinds of things we wonder about this story. There may be questions. There may be doubts. It's okay to have them. Even Jesus' disciples had them as well, and they were there for this. That's why we always say as a church, we want to be a church where people can belong before they believe. But I'm telling you, please don't miss this. Something amazing happened on that first Easter morning, and it changed the world, and it continues to change the world. And that's why it's being celebrated all over the world today, in different languages, in different countries, in different time zones, because something amazing happened, and it changed the the world. Now, this would be a point if we were able to engage with, the, with each other, which we can even online, where you could say, amen. You can't say it because I can't hear you, but you could type it in right now. So if you think something amazing happened on that first Easter that continues to be amazing today, you can type in amen right now, and we can engage with each other that way. I can't hear you, but I can see you, and we can see each other. So let's say amen. Something amazing happened on that very first Easter Sunday. We've entitled this weekend, this Easter weekend, Greater Love, because this is the greatest love we could ever have, a God who has come and given of himself so fully and so freely for us, leading to this good news of, of, of Easter resurrection hope. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And friends, this eternal life, that is, is spoken of here, it's not just what happens when we die, though we celebrate that today. This is Resurrection Day. Death has been defeated. Many of us remember and think about those loved ones who we've lost. We think about our son Lucas on a day like today in a very special way. We hold on to that promise of eternal life, of resurrection hope. Death has been defeated. That could get an amen as well if you want to type that in. But this is even more than that. What happens in this story is that we're given life here on earth. And when Jesus speaks about eternal life, he's also speaking about this new life that we can have here, now, today, on this planet, in this world. Another passage that reminds us how great this love is that we're celebrating this weekend, this Easter weekend, is from John 15, verse 13, where it says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. That's what Jesus has done He's given of himself so fully and so freely. A good friend of mine, a good friend of ours, one of our church members, passed away recently. His name is Marv Southcott. Many of you will know Marv. We, 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 we grieve that loss. We celebrate his life, and we certainly pray for his wife, Mary. But what I want to tell you about Marv is a week or so before Marv passed away, he, uh, he wanted to get in touch with me. And he, he simply wanted me to know, <laughs> he simply wanted me to know that he always had my back, that he was always supportive of what we were doing at the church. And believe me, we've gone through some challenges and transitions and change. And so for Marv to offer that just a week before he passed away, man, 
that's a pretty significant kind of love. I just felt so loved by him and so grateful for him to want to talk to me and tell me that he's got my back. And that, I think, gives us a glimpse of this kind of love, this greater love that God has for us, all part of this Easter celebration. This love, this greater love, it, it started actually with the cross. Don't want to lose the power of the cross as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday today because that's what makes this news so special. That's what makes it so significant. In some ways, that's what makes it real. You see, Jesus, God, came in human flesh and entered into the fullness of our suffering and our pain. And as we all, as we all experience the reality of COVID-19, I think that's really good for us to know today, that we are not alone no matter what we're facing. Because sometimes the Christian life, faith, people can have this misrepresentation, if you will, that life is easy and simple and always good, but that's not always the case. That's not real. But the gospel is real. The good news is real. The Christian faith is real, that God came in Jesus, entered fully into all that we experience. And so we can know that we're not alone no matter what we're facing. And hopefully that's good news for you today. Again, if you want to type an amen, this might be a place to do that, to know that you're not alone, whatever you face. That's part of this story, that God has come and entered into the, the reality of our pain and our suffering. And that's one of the things I love about the cross. It just, it just makes everything so very real. But the story doesn't stop there. The cross leads to resurrection. That's that's what we celebrate today. That's the amazing story that we just read. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being the women and showing up at that tomb and it being empty? <laughs> it, 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 the shock. Imagine the shock. Imagine the surprise. Imagine the hope. N.T. Wright has written a book called Surprised by Hope that talks about the power of Jesus' resurrection, the new life that it brings. That's what they experienced that first Easter morning. When, when they entered into that and, and were surprised by this, 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 this reality, maybe they got a sense of what Jesus was saying was actually true. That what he had predicted, what he promised, he is who he said he was. There was a, a sense of, 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 of something greater happening than they'd ever seen or heard before. And it's interesting because in Matthew 28, verse 8, as, as the women were leaving the tomb, as they were leaving, leaving what they just experienced, I, I love what it says. It says, So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and then they ran to tell the disciples. This was good news. They couldn't wait to tell the others. But it's interesting what they experienced in that moment. Afraid yet filled with joy. Isn't that something that we've been experiencing through this time, this COVID-19? Afraid, uncertain, worried about finances, the chaos, the, the isolation. How long will this last? All these things that can bring fear, and yet into the midst of that, we can have joy. That's what they experienced in this first Easter morning, that joy, life, was rising up in the midst of the of the, all that they were facing. That's what it is to experience the resurrection. Maybe that's what it is in the midst of all that we face, to still have joy. It's been quite a time, hasn't it? I, I think this will be an Easter, <laughs> this will be an Easter that we will never forget for so many reasons. And, and yet, Hasn't there been some amazing moments too already in the four weeks or so that we've been experiencing this isolation, this very new normal, this very different way of life? It's been challenging. I mean, it's been hard. I don't know what your home has been like, but I know for five of us to be in the same house all the time, it, it's, it's, it's been great in many ways, but it's been challenging. And I just, can you hear about the challenges others are facing? Yet there's been these, these amazing moments within that uncertainty and that chaos where where God has risen up and brought great joy. And that's what resurrection is, that God can rise up, bring life into the midst of death, bring hope in the midst of despair, bring peace in the midst of uncertainty. That's what God does because that's who God is. It, we have a God of resurrection. And that might be an amen time as well, if you want to type that in so we can encourage each other, that we have a God of resurrection 
who can rise up even and especially in the midst of all that we're facing right now. So how have you been experiencing God rising up in the midst of all that we've been facing the, these days? Where have, you, where have you seen this? How have you experienced this joy that the women who were the first ones in on the scene experienced even in the midst of, of the fear and the questions and the worry and all that was happening? How have you experienced this in, in your own life? This hope that God is bringing even in the midst of this. I know in our house, uh, yeah, it, it's it's we've had challenges as as I said, but it's been there's been some great moments along the way. We had a, we had a night a week or so ago where um, we ended up having a dunk contest out on the driveway, and it was just because everybody was bored and we had to do something, and so the boys were having a dunk contest. They asked me to be the judge, so I said, "There's no way I'm judging you two on my own." So I brought out Katrina and our daughter Leah, and together we had this dunk contest where we judged the boys, and we just had so much fun. It was just a great moment that we'll always remember. We uh, we wanted to go up and see my parents up in Mount Forest, and because of the the, the social distancing. Um, we weren't able to have the visit that we wanted to have. Uh, this was even before things got as strict as they are now. So we went up and we, we had a little, little, little lunch outside in the cold on the front porch because we didn't want to go in the house and we didn't want to, we just wanted to keep that distance to keep people safe. But you know what? Like it was a memory that we'll never forget. It was still good. Things can still be good in the midst of all of the challenges that we're facing. And that's a part of this resurrection hope that God can bring. We've been having um, more Zoom meetings these days than I've ever had in my, in my life. And one of them is a Zoom prayer meeting where we get a number of people on together, 25, 30, 40 people even, and we pray together. And I got to tell you, one of the things that happens when you start seeing people show up on the screen and pop up and see their faces, it just, it just feels so good to see people, to be connected again. I think one of the ways that God is rising up in, in these times is we're deepening our love for each other and our appreciation for connection and for people. And that's a good thing. There's good things that are happening even in the midst of, of, the, of the challenges. I heard of a, a local restaurant that wants to make food and give it away as, as takeout to, to people that maybe wouldn't otherwise be able to have a meal like that. What a, what a great idea. Things like that are, are bubbling up all over the place. You may have heard of something called viral kindness. Well, check this out.
That's resurrection. That's resurrection in the way it can look like God rising up in us and through all of us. We celebrate that today as part of the ways that God is bringing hope to our world today. Friends, again, I'm just so glad that we get to celebrate Easter together. I want to close today with, with something that's been on, on my heart. And my guess is it may have been on, on yours as well. Just this hunger for hope. In fact, our, our, we have such a hunger for hope these days that, that we've, we've adjusted our series that's coming up after, after Easter. We had a great series planned. We're going to do it again one other day, but we're going to focus on, on hope because we just have a sense that, that people need more hope now than ever before. To know that fear, yeah, fear's real. Um, it's contagious, but you know what? So is hope. Hope is contagious. We want to talk about how can we find solitude in the midst of isolation, where this time of being isolated, we can even be blessed by this time, time with God, time with others. We want to talk about making room for the new. As we've talked a little bit this morning, that God can use this time that we've been experiencing and, and, and God is doing new things. That's resurrection. So we want to make room for the new that God is rising up. That's what this series is going to be about because we believe that hope is something that we, we hunger for just as much as we hunger and need toilet paper. I mean, you think about all that's been happening with that. Hey, well, let's, let's, let's put hope in an even greater category. We're going to talk about that over the next several weeks. We would love for, it, for you to join us for that. In the Psalms, in the Psalms, it, it says this, David writes, But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. This is Psalm 39, verse 7. What a, what a, relevant, what a relevant verse for us as we think about our world today. But now, Lord, what do I look for? Where do I look? What can I do? What's, what's, what's happening here? And he says, my hope is in you. Well, what's that mean to, to put our hope in God? What does, that even, what does that even look like? Well, I think it means several things. It, it, it means putting our hope in something greater than ourselves. A, a greater love, as we've talked about this weekend, Easter weekend, a greater love that reminds us that we're way more than our last success or our last failure, that we're loved deeply and fully by a God who made us and knows us. It, it, putting our, our hope in God means a, a, a love that has defeated death as we celebrated it today, that we still can have connections with our loved ones, that we can have new life here. We celebrate all of that today. The tomb is empty. Death has been defeated. That's part of this, this hope that we can have on a day like today. It means putting our hope in a God who is good and faithful and who has seen us through tough things. We've gone through tough things before. I'm sure that you have too. And we can trust in this hope that God will get us through it again. That's part of what this means. It means putting our hope in a God who is rising up in our midst in new ways, to be aware of that and to look for that and to, to come along for the ride as we move into the future together. And friends, it means that even when things aren't right, because you might be in a place right now where there's things going on in your life that just aren't right yet, not fair, not right. Just know that part of the promise of resurrection means that, that what isn't right, isn't done, that God's not done with that yet, that the resurrection promise is both here and now, but it's still on its way. And we can put our trust in that. Friends, it means, it means putting our trust in a God who can do all these things more than we can ask or imagine. And so as we close today, I just want to close with a prayer. And this might be a time, a day for you to say yes to putting your trust in God, in these kinds of things. And if that's something that you're feeling led or moved to do today, we'll just invite you to engage with us with a yes. You can type in yes and just know that that's a way to respond, to receive this good news that we have in Jesus, to put our trust in God like it offers us in this psalm. So I just invite you as we pray and after the prayer to, to say yes to God today if that's something that you're being moved to do, to receive this greater love that we've talked about today. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we, uh, we recognize that in these times that we are living, there is a greater need for you than ever before. And so we are so grateful that on this Easter Sunday, we can come together in this way and worship you and catch a glimpse of you, a God who is and brings good news, new life, 
you enter into all of those places of pain and brokenness in our world, all of that, that has come through the power of the cross, that we are not alone, never, ever, no matter what we're going through, and that you rise up even and especially in the midst of all of these things, always doing a new thing. You are God of resurrection, of new life and hope, and we celebrate that today. We say yes to that today. We say yes to you and just entrust our lives, <laughs> all of it, into your very faithful hands. Thank you for your love and your goodness, and we celebrate all of that today in this Easter experience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. There's a reason I can sing There's a reason for this life inside me One name above all names Jesus, yes it's Jesus There's a reason for this whole For this peace that I know One worthy of all praise Jesus, yes it's Jesus I will lift my hands up I will raise my voice high I will shout up has left these lungs I'll forever be with you where the song goes on and on
Thank you so much for joining us in worship. We really hope you enjoyed this Easter service. God bless you and your families, and stay safe and healthy. Have a wonderful week. Where the song goes on and on. Thanks, Duncan, and everyone for joining us today. For this, to hear that inspiring message from Jamie about greater love and the resurrected Christ. We hope you join us next week for our, we're launching a new series called Hope is Alive at 9 and 11 a.m. We know that Easter looks different for everyone this year. Maybe you're going to connect with someone through a virtual dinner or a phone call today. But from my family, from the larger church around North Beverly United Church, we wish you a happy Easter and a blessed week. Okay, this is a test. This is only a test. Uh, my name's uh, Dwayne. I'm the uh, chief cook and bottle washer. Is the red light on? I can't see. Uh, where? On the on the yes. screen. Okay. Yes. Max, you don't want to put your thing on. You went to the grave to show us that our God loves us so much, more than we can comprehend. Yeah, don't use that prayer. I tried. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to North Beverly Lake Church, Church Online. We are so glad you chose to join us here today. If you could do me, uh, my name is... Nah. Hi. I don't know what to say anymore. You know, it's beyond the, this is a test, this is only a test. <laughs> time on earth is through when my final breath has left these lungs I'll forever be with you where the song goes on and on